In response to the pull up or shut up movement, many companies are publishing their race metrics and setting up new hiring goals to re increase the number of their black executives, such as Google, PepsiCo. And you might be curious, are uh, these companies required to report race information? Um, is this data confidential? So today I'm going to talk about E01 report that's related to reporting the race information. I will share what it is uh, E01 report. Who needs to file the report? When should they file the report? Is the E01 data confidential? And show some demonstrations of race and job categories. So first of all, what is E01 report? The EO1 report is a compliance survey that's mandated by federal statute and regulations. The survey requires companies uh, to report their employment data, and this employment data has to be categorized by race, ethnicity, gender, and job category. So who needs to file EO1 report? Not every employer are required to file it. There are two categories of employers. First one, the uh, who will fill out the standard form 100. Um, this uh, covers the employers who has 100 or more employees. Or if the company is owned or corporately affiliated with another company and the entire enterprise employs a total of 100 or more employees, they're covered as well. So subject to Title VII of Civil Rights Act of 1964, they have to file the EO1 report annually. The second category are those who are federal government contractors but it has um, either the prime contractors or first-tier subcontractors. They are su subject to the executive order 11246. And if you fall in this category, there are two requirements you have to meet. First, if you have 50 or more employees. And second, um, your prime contract or the first tier subcontract is amount to $50,000 or more. You have to meet both requirements and then you will uh, need to file the EO1 report annually. And just uh, to be noted that when you count the employees to determine if you're required to submit EO1 data, only the employees on the payroll during the workforce snapchat period are counted. So this uh, snapshot period is from uh, October to December of the year. And when do you need to file the report? So all EO1 reports must be submitted and um, certified no later than May 31st following the reporting year. And the employment figures from any pay period um, during this snapshot period uh, is fine, which is from October to December. And the next question is EO1 data confidential? Yes. So. Um, in the Title VII of um, Civil Rights Act of 1964, um, there is a prohibited disclosure, um, talk about the penalties. Um, it stated that it shall be unlawful for any officer or employee of the commission to make public in any manner, uh, whatever any information obtained by the commission uh, pursuant to its authority under its this section prior to institution of any proceeding under this sub uh, chapter involving such information. So um, if any of the officer or employee of the commission who make any of the information public, they are subject to the penalties. And this could uh, include that um, uh, a fine of no uh, more than a thousand dollars or uh, imprisoned for uh, no more than one year. And the idea, the goal for the confidentiality, uh, confidentiality uh, requirements allow the EEOC to publish only aggregated data. And in this case, um, only in a manner that 
that it cannot reveal any particular filler's information or any individual employee's personal information. So then the, um, I'm sure you're curious about um, the actual form. So the actual uh, table in the form contains uh, two major categories. One is the race, ethnicity, sex identification, and the other category is the uh, job titles. So for um, race, ethnicity, and gender, uh, you have to be clear that um, the self-identification is the preferred method to identify which race you're at and what gender you're, you are at. If an employee declines to self-identify his or her race or ethnicity, then employment records or observer uh, identification can be used. And here is a demonstration of um, the table in the EEO1 report. I'll share the link of the sample report as well. Um, as you can see on the top, uh, you can identify the uh, gender and race ethnicity information there. Um, ethnicity are categorized um, as the following, Hispanic, Latino, white, black or African American, uh, native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, etc. And the next important piece of information is job category. So job categories are divided uh, into like executives, uh, first level officials, managers, professionals, technicians, service workers, etc. And the idea um, of having both of this information is that you can see how many um, uh, people in certain race are in certain uh, job positions. Uh, job titles. So here in the table, you can see on the left, it shows um, the categories of the job titles. And on the EEOC website, they define um, each of these job titles clearly. So as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, Google, PepsiCo are trying to increase their um, number of employees, black executive employees. So here uh, you will see that their goal is to increase the number um, of employees here who are identified as black or African American and whose job category, whose title is executive. So um, here's a question for you. What do you think are some of the HR practices they should use to increase the number of uh, black executives? Uh, share your comments below. Thank you.